where it's at, baby. Hey guys. So last time I went camping, uh, it was very, very windy and I couldn't even set up my tent. And I just bought this truck and I was like, well, I have a camper shell. So I just threw my inflatable mattress in the back of it and slept in it overnight. And it was okay, but it was cheap inflatable mattress and went dead on me pretty quick. I uh, woke up in the middle of the night basically laying on the bed of the truck. But I was still relatively comfortable, so I decided to get outfitted so that next time I come out for a trip, I'm just going to crash in the back of the truck. And this is what I've come up with. So I looked on YouTube and saw how you guys were decking these things out. A lot of built-ins and things like that, but I didn't want to go that far. I want something that can be a pickup truck again in a matter of 20 minutes. So I went this route. And, you know, keep it simple, man. Food, some sleeping bags, five-gallon bucket toilet, a little bit of clothes, a little uh, heater buddy, and, of course, a carbon monoxide reader, which didn't make him peep all night. And threw up one of these little cheapo light switches because I think they're cool. And uh, all my stove and kitchen stuff and regular campus stuff all pretty much fits in this container which slides right there into that space. Then I have my cooler which uh, slides right in there too and my fly fishing stuff. My fly bag and my waders and my waiter bag and my boots. Other than that, that's all I need. So there it is. When I get home, I'll show y'all what I actually did to that bed. But it's simple. Oh, one other thing I do have to do is I've got to insulate this roof. It's an aluminum roof, so the condensation was kind of a problem. But uh, the way this is constructed, man, three big sheets of insulation across the top and some patchwork here and there, and that'll be clean as a whistle. So here we go. Ooh, my coffee's ready. Cheers, guys. Finally got one. Woo! What's up, guys? We just got back from a successful trip out on the South Fork of the Boise doing a little fly fishing. And I thought I would show you all my setup. This was my first take on camper shell camping with a few accoutrements. Still got a long way to go, but it was pretty successful first run. And this is all the stuff I need for a couple of days out on the river fly fishing. Let's check it out. So it is a fly fishing trip. So of course got my fly bag and my net. And uh, I'll walk you guys through that sometime on my fly fishing channel. But uh, that's kind of a cool thing I do. I took an old Game Boy bag and clipped it on there. And it has my GoPro stuffs, extra batteries, and a first generation hero in there that I don't mind floating down the river. And a waiter bag. That actually holds two sets of waders, hip and chest, two sets of boots, cleated in felt, and a corker, so I've also got extra soles I could put on there if I need some rubber. What I love about fly fishing is just so simple. Got two rods, that's all the space they take up. Hell, I've got room for a lot more rods. And as for big ticket camping items, pretty much all fit nice and snug in this tote. Got my heater buddy, my Coleman stove, some lanterns, some flashlights, paper towels, little hanging tree garbage bag, and some tools. And that's pretty much it. Filet knife, cutting board. That's all I need as far as the kitchen goes. And it all sets up quite nicely on the tailgate. I've actually got a big folding uh, camping kitchen, but I don't need it for this gig. Now that's already opened up pretty good. 
And then under the bunk, a little duffel bag with a few more kitchen items. Thermos, percolator, pots, utensils, a few spices, that's about it. And these two bins, all my food stuffs. Just enough for a couple of days, nothing fancy. Some canned goods, a few more spices, some coffee, and some snacks. That's all I need. And in box number two, keep all my propane cylinders, an extra lighter for my stove, and of course a carbon monoxide detector. So this didn't make a peep all night, but I still wouldn't do without it. Um, I've seen some videos and some uh, tests on whether or not these little heater buddies actually put off carbon monoxide. Um, I don't care. I'm gonna have this thing in here at all times. Probably gonna put up some screws and mount it right there above my head. But uh, always good to have, highly recommended. And the reason I use such a rugged action packer tote is because I could just sit it next to the tailgate and use it as a step. And then, continuing under the cot, I've got a fold-out camp chair. has a bunch of pockets and a little fold-out table. I did not use that on this last trip. I just sat on the tailgate, and I was too busy fishing to sit around. But uh, that's always handy. And another duffel bag with some spare clothes. And another very large duffel bag with all my bedding and a zero degree sleeping bag, a couple of pillows, and a few extra blankets, and a couple of towels. And that all just tucks away quite nicely. Which brings us to the bed, the main feature. This is the one thing I had to do a little bit of fabrication on, so I wanted it to fit perfect, which it does, you can see that. So what I had to do was get this about seven and a half inches shorter, which means I had to take three and three quarters of an inch off of each one of these horizontal supports and take the plastic end caps out of there, stick them in there, and put it all back together with the leg assembly, and tap these holes, and uh, put it all back together, and it still functions just like it just came out of the factory. And then I had to take a good section off of that inside leg so it would sit up on top of the wheel well and then I took this cross brace and cut it so that half of it goes horizontal links with the other cross member and then the other half goes right back up to the corner in its stock position and it works great I mean it functions as if I never did anything but it fits perfectly so I am really happy with that plus it has a little net basket thing from a phone. As for the mattress, this is a foam mattress topper. It was a queen size. I cut it in half and doubled it up and then stuck it inside of an old uh, sleeping bag. So it's basically a camp mattress. Oh, so comfy. So, so comfy. Especially with that zero degree sleeping bag up there and a couple of pillows. Oh man, I slept like a baby. Very cool. And this back corner, this is just one of my aluminum fold-out camping tables. And without the legs fully extended, it just fits in there. Look at that. It's tight. And then under it, I've got a five-gallon bucket with a little toilet seat. So I don't have to get out of the camper in the middle of the night because that's a drag when it's cold. And back here is kind of the brains of the operation. It's a deep cycle trolling motor and a battery box with a 750 watt Eversmart inverter. And that tells you your battery voltage, how much juice you got left, and what you're drawing. It's got a couple USB ports and a couple of 110 outlets. Um, the draw is important because I tried to hook up a electric heater in here and it didn't like it. It was letting me know that that wasn't a good idea. So I ended up having to go with the heater buddy after all, which turned out to be just fine. But I tried. Well, I usually have a lantern on my table there, along with my iPad and whatever else I'm charging. Also got a little light here that's stuck up. It's a little $4 LED. Super bright, it lights up the whole camper. I thought I'd need two, but one's the charm. And sticking it right here, I can turn it on from outside the truck and 
when I'm laying down, I can just flip it off with my toe. So that worked out. I might stick another one on this side just for the sake of being even and in case one of the batteries dies, but it's LED. It's gonna take a long time for the batteries to die. And I do carry batteries and a fly swatter. And that's all for the bed of the truck. So for a simple fly fishing trip where I'm just going to the river for a couple of nights, that's all I need. And as you can see here, inside the truck, I got a backpack with my iPad and some other electronics and a few other personal items. And other than that, nothing in the cab at all. So I could actually have a passenger if I wanted to. That's weird. In that Jeep, when I'm camping out of that sucker, Ain't no room for nothing. Lucky if I can get a soda. And since I'm just fly fishing out of this for now, I don't have the need for, you know, my boat or a trailer or a dirt bike. Um, but, you know, with this setup, throw a trailer on here, throw my goodies on back, we're gold. Dig it. All right, so what was foul about this trip was the fact that all I've got in here is a piece of carpet that I usually use in the bottom of my tent and no insulation on an aluminum camper shell. And yeah, the condensation got nuts. So I'm gonna go to the Home Depot and get a roll of outdoor carpet and fill all them spaces with it. And I don't know if I'm gonna use spray adhesive or 3M or both. You guys have any suggestions as for sticking outdoor carpet to aluminum I'd love to hear it <laughs> corrugated aluminum at that and once I get that done and cut a nice piece of that carpet to fill the bed correctly and fit around the wheel wells like it's made to be there I think I'll be set I think that'll be tight and then just uh, kind of dial things in as I go so that's it that's my camper set up and obviously another 10 minutes and it's a pickup truck so yeah i'm pretty stoked can only get better from here still a little foul let's make it fair see you next time thanks for watching cheers Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Please and thank you. Good job. Make sure you bring it back with a full tank. Okay.